So my first job outside of grad school was a science policy fellow at Research America. And I got this job largely thanks to the Professional Development and Careers Office. Um, so I met people from Research America um, at a seminar. And after it was over, I came up to, them, I came up to her and um, asked if we could partner up and host an event at Hopkins. So after this event, um, I applied for jobs. And that's how she knew who I was. And that's where I got the position. My day-to-day -day changes from day-to-day. -day. Um, it varies a lot from uh, a lot of reading and writing current events to organizing uh, meetings for our committee members to doing things like organizing for Hill Day. So uh, it varies from uh, depending on what kind of activities we have going on. So a lot of the work uh, that I do is to ensure that um, members of the American Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology are well represented uh, in Congress, but also have a voice when um, the National Institutes of Health or the National Science Foundation um, implements new policies. So we want to make sure that those um, policies um, benefit um, our members. When I was applying um, for science policy fellowships, I made sure to include all of the opportunities that I had um, taken when I was a grad student to do science policy um, activities like um, email writing and letter, campaign, uh, letter writing campaigns. Uh, I also made sure to convey why the skills I learned as a grad student would transfer very well to these positions. And also, so one thing I recommend as if you're a graduate student, postdoc, or um, any a scientist looking to make the transition, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to do these um, different types of uh, advocacy activities. And if there are none that exist in your institution, you should start one. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. So during the interview, I made sure to not only talk about the job description uh, and address how my, uh, my skills matched those descriptions, but I also thought about the job uh, in a much broader, broader um, aspect. So thinking about um, how this job can grow in the next few years, um, what I can do to um, meet the mission statements of the organization as a whole. So I made sure when I was, before my interviews, I did a lot of calls to people I knew at the organization to find out um, insider information about um, what was important to um, the organization. One myth in working in science policy and advocacy is that I think, or in any job that is outside of the bench, I think is the myth that you cannot return to the bench. I think a lot of scientists are afraid that once they make that leap outside of academia that they can't go back. So I think that's a really um, false um, perception. I think people do make that transition back. Um, another thing about science policy um, is that it can be boring. That the myth can, that is, it can be boring, but it is very fast paced, very dynamic, and things just change all the time. And it's a lot of fun. I do mostly read and write um, for my job, but a lot of it is to make and um, have opinions on, on policies and um, activities that happen on the Hill. So we do have an opportunity to make a big impact. Uh, and sometimes it can seem very frustrating, uh, but those times where you can see your work uh, manifest itself and change, that's really worth it. So if you're a postdoc or a grad student looking to get into science policy, I would recommend um, seeking opportunities first in your institution because usually they have um, science policy groups that um, have already opportunities for grad students and postdocs. If not, start your own or um, make a phone call to your legislator, uh, write a letter, and what concerns do you have? Um, convey that to them and see whether or not it's something you like. Um, and that's something people who are hiring um, science policy advocates really look for is the experience. Mm -hmm.